and uh, of course Herbert has uh, has gotten many 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 uh, uh, prizes uh, like the Poincaré Prize, Boltzmann Medal, Danny Heinemann Prize in Mathematical Physics and many others and I must say uh, close to me is his book on large scale dynamics of interacting particles, which I, I view as a, as a real classic. And he has also done a lot of, lot of uh, fundamental work on many, many fields in kinetic theory, in pa particle systems, hydrodynamic limit, open quantum systems. He's one of the uh, people who, are, who were responsible for the KPZ revolution quite recently during the last 10, 15 years. And uh, Quite, uh, during the last few years, he has been involved in integrable systems, which is now today the topic of his talk. So today he's going to talk about the Toda system, generalized hydrodynamics for the Toda, Toda chain. Please, Herbert. Thank you very much, Antti. I hope you, you can hear me. I mean, is that okay? Yes, very good. Yes, okay, all right. Okay, so thank you very much for this kind invitation. Uh, so it was my pleasure, really to give this talk. Um, and um, it's an area which has been sort of um, very active in condensed matter physics. I mean, uh, you know, lots of people have been studying uh, sort of Euler type uh, equations for integrable systems. Uh, th that includes also experiments. I mean, the Lieb-Linegar model is one case which you can actually realize experimentally. You can compare theoretical predictions with, uh, with uh, measurements. But um, for this talk, you know, I sort of have to limit myself. I just want to give you a, um, a sort of a feeling of what, you know, what the questions really are and what, what one would like to do. And for this purpose, uh, it turns out that um, the classical total lattice is sort of uh, by now, sort of, you know, from a mathematical physics perspective, the best understood system. And so what I want to do in this talk here is to explain you a little bit about the classical total lattice. I'm not assuming that people have seen this. And so, you know, that's by itself is sort of a nice topic, but then I want to link, you know, these studies to uh, what would be or what are the, the correct uh, hydrodynamic equations for that many particle system. Okay, so let me let me start with uh, with the Toda lattice. Or uh, maybe uh, let's see. Uh, no, I can't. I, no, I cannot move anymore. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm here. Okay, so let me start with the Toda lattice, which uh, was um, invented by by Toda uh, sixty eight or sixty seven, and uh, it's a very famous integrable many body system. It has a very simple structure here I've written. It's, everything is classical, so it's just classical mechanics. So here I've written the Hamiltonian, the usual kinetic energy. And then it's really a chain in the sense that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not an interaction which is symmetric under all particles, but those particles with, with uh, neighboring labels are actually interacting. So, and, and uh, there's a very specific interaction potential, namely uh, it's, it's uh, just an exponential function. Okay, and then you write down Newton. Of course, uh, here I've written formally sort of uh, 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 the infinite system, but eventually we'll have to deal with boundary conditions and all kinds of things, but, but uh, just to give you the basic impression. And then you can write down Newton's equation of motion, which uh, are simply of that type. And um, uh, usually in the physics literature, you'll find sort of, you know, little parameters, there's a mass, and then there's a decay constant of this potential. But then at the end, if you do space-time rescaling, you realize that there's no free parameter in this model. So, so it's just fixed. Uh, I'm not going to, to, to change that model at all. Now, of course, there are other integrable models uh, which, uh, which people uh, have looked at, which are also interesting in this context. I mean, there's a KDV equation, sign Gordon equation. I left out the uh, Kalocho Moser models. I mean, one model which, which I really would like to do is sort of uh, an interacting particles with a one over sin squared potential. That's sort of a short range potential for which uh, you also should have a hydrodynamic theory, but um, no, no progress uh, uh, to be reported. And so I will just stick to the Toda. Of course, you know, there are the well known quantum models, XXC models the Lieb Lindiger model, Fermi Hubbard, quantum Toda, and others. Okay, but let me just, as I said, I mean, let me just concentrate on, on out of these many integrable systems, uh, just uh, the classical Toda. So there are two ways to actually look at this system. One of them is sort of presumably what you would sort of think of naively, namely 
you just think of particles on the V line. I mean, there's uh, maybe I did not mention this. I mean, there's no, uh, you know, there's no ordering between particles. I mean, uh, they can sort of cross each other. And um, uh, so you can view this just as a particle system uh, uh, of particles moving on the V line. And then it sort of looks like a fluid. I mean, therefore, People like to call this soda fluid, which I think is a, is a good word for the description. But another way is to say, okay, you know, this is really a, a discretized lattice field. So J is sort of just the index of the discretization. And, and, and uh, these are sort of displacement variables. And then, you know, this gives you obviously one derivative and then there's another derivative in front of the exponential. And so you can think of this as a discrete nonlinear wave equation with a very particular, uh, you know, nonlinearity. And in fact, Toda was mostly thinking about this case. And in my talk, you will see that this is sort of somewhat more natural than, than the other one. But the next picture is just a Toda fluid. I just want to give you an impression what it looks like. So these are uh, 16 Toda uh, particles. Uh, you just solve this numerically. You, you, I mean, time goes in this direction. And here's just sort of uh, the spatial variables. And, and, and you see how what the trajectory looked like. I mean, so. So, you know, there's a lot of interaction. I mean, you know, you can hear that there's sort of a well, nicely isolated two particle action. Here's another one, but then you have here a whole change of complicated interactions and uh, uh, it, it's certainly, you know, a strongly interacting system. Now um, here, uh, it, it, the periodic boundary conditions were imposed. I mean, so, you know, the, the, the cell size is sort of 20 units and this one you should think sort of coming back on the other side. Now, um, uh, when you look at the system, uh, you know, and you, you just let it run, uh, at some stage it will sort of settle down to uh, a an, an, uh, sort of time stationary situation. And in our particular case, we have 16 particles and we have actually 15 conservation, uh, no, sorry, we have 17 conservation laws. And so the motion is actually on a 15, dimensional torus and eventually you know as you go on I mean the trajectories will uniformly fill this sore. I will come to this back a little bit later but uh, what I want to do first is uh, to give you an impression um, I want to discuss uh, and you know to sort of show you in a very elementary way what what uh, integrability means for the system um, the first thing I want to show you is the scattering situation so you think that I remove these lines here and simply let it run and then eventually particles will separate. So I will discuss for a short while the scattering situation. Okay, so here's the scattering. So here's the sketch, sort of the very naive sketch, you know, when you just think of, of, of uh, two particles collision, which of course is, is, is too simplified. But um, uh, this is a, a beautiful paper by Barry Moser many, many years back, where he sort of analyzed to the total lattice and, and uh, uh, sort of uh, established what would be in the scattering situation, the long time behavior of the total system. And one thing which you can sort of see already from this picture is that, um, you know, uh, the, the, the asymptote, I mean, the, the, the incoming order of momenta will be inversed. I mean, so here it's three, two, one, and here it's one, it, it's sort of, you know, I mean, it, it, this is really the particle which is moving. I mean, this is just a label. And so three will go three, two, one, okay? And uh, I mean, the momenta are reversed, okay? And, uh, but then there's, there's a, which will be important, uh, what I was going to come, I mean, there will be an order one scattering shift. So when I look at the, uh, the long time asymptotics uh, towards the past, then um, uh, of course you have the linear behavior uh, with a definite momentum and, and uh, uh, but then there's an order one shift. And this is what sort of what is called the scattering shift. So there will be an order one shift to the, uh, to the past and there will be an uh, ordering one shift to the future. And, and, and the momenta, which, which is very specific for integrable systems, they are just really reversed. I mean, you know, they're sort of, in each two particle collision, there's momentum conservation. If I modify this potential over here, then of course, you know, these formals are still correct, but the asymptotic momenta and the, and the phase shifts will be, you know, they're not very well understood, will be much more complicated objects. But here in the integrable case, you first of all have the, the simple feature that uh, the, the, the momenta of the incoming configuration are the same as uh, in the outgoing configuration. But the, the other thing, which is even more surprising when you look at the numerical pictures is that the scattering shift is additive. So if you want to compute the scattering shift, you can go back to this very simple picture and say, aha, you know, 
uh, I, uh, two and three and two have a certain collision, and so you know the, if if the uh, incoming momenta are, are sufficiently low, I mean then they will be just pushed apart, and then uh, again there will be another scattering shift, and again they will be pushed apart. And so if I want to know what is the scattering shift of three, I just have to add up these two scattering shifts, and this is what the theorem of Morse tells you, and that's the characteristic of all integrable systems. Namely, that uh, um, uh, the, 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 the scattering situation is particularly simple in the sense that, you know, once I have solved the two-particle problem, I also have solved the n-particle problem. Now you do a little computation. So here's sort of, you know, the, the scattering shift again. I mean, the incoming and the outgoing here, sort of uh, uh, the order one convection. You can think of this also as a time delay. But anyway, I'm thinking here spatially, so there will be just a spatial shift. And uh, when you do this little, little computation, you discover that the two-particle shift is simply the logarithm of the absolute value of the of the two incoming momenta. So at the v and v prime, this is how much you are pushed out or pushed in, but uh, in a collision. Now, now uh, the somewhat surprising thing is that this logarithm will appear very indirectly again. But but that's a generic feature of of all this integrable system that you know this logarithm does not only determine. Uh, the long time dynamics in in a scattering situation, but also determines the thermodynamics, okay, they're intertwined, so to speak. Okay, so now let's uh, come to a little bit uh, closer to what we want to do, namely, uh, we want to sort of uh, look at the hydrodynamic equations. Um, uh, I'm working on the Euler scale, I mean, people have looked at Navier-Stokes convection, but then let's look at the Euler scale, so you have ballistic scaling, of course, our space dimension is one, and, uh, you know, we have conservation laws, and, and hydrodynamics basically means that on a large scale, you have uh, a hyperbolic conservation law. So the time change of such a field will be governed by, uh, uh, by this uh, hyperbolic equation, but with a current function, which is uh, generically uh, some, some nonlinear function of, of, of the field, right? I mean, so this is the typical sort of structure. And if you sort of want to think of what would be the underlying microscopic feature, then uh, here I'm plotting for you sort of one particular a uh, field configuration or, or, or function here, uh, it's just basically at some given fixed time. And then uh, if I take my microscope and I enlarge very much, you know, what I see near this point, then eventually I will see an underlying lattice, let's say. And on this lattice, you will see an equilibrium distribution of particles with a parameter which is sort of uh, determined or directly given in terms of this field view. Okay, so it's clear that that you know we are, we are if you want to understand hydrodynamics, we will have to study uh, the total lattice or the total fluid with random initial conditions. Now the difficulty is that the total will have lots and lots of uh, conserved quantities, and therefore the u will be you know a, 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 will be a vector with very very many components, and this function sort of looks like a very very complicated function, and so 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 this is somehow what we have to figure out. Okay. So uh, what is, what is uh, sort of the, the goal in a way? I mean, first of all, we, we have to sort of, you know, I put here equilibrium. Uh, we first have to figure out what is actually that equilibrium. And, and, and once we understand what, what, you know, what the correct meaning of equilibrium is, then uh, we will have to compute in, in this equilibrium say we will have to compute what is the average value of the fields, that's uh, U, and what are, what are the average values of the currents. Okay. So we have to do the statistical mechanics of the total. So in fact, uh, you know, the, the next um, 25 minutes or so will be basically the statistical mechanics of the total lattice. Okay. All right. So 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 now let's. Uh, so, so you saw that in the picture. So if I want to do statistical mechanics, I need some confinement. And uh, uh, you see, when you confine an integrable system just by external forces, some potential. I mean, you you confine this, the particles to, to some box, uh, then typically you, you break integrability. And that's of course not a very good idea because you know, then sort of some of, you know, maybe it's true in, in some limiting sense, but, but you know, as a technical tool, you, you, you're completely lost. I mean, so, so this is not what you can do. But fortunately, I mean, for the total lattice, uh, we, we can impose periodic point boundary conditions without losing integrability. And the way how you do these boundary conditions is that you do periodic boundary conditions for the momenta. So that's the obvious one, but then for the positions, it's just like I showed you in the picture. I first have to identify what is sort of um, my elementary cell. I mean, let's say here it has a size L and then you simply start copying, I mean, in the next side. And this is sort of 
as a formula, this is the lattice uh, size, uh, I mean the cell size, and, and this is what the formula means. Uh, actually for the total, L can be positive and negative. So I will not go into this. I mean, you might think it's just the same, but it's not the same. Anyway, let, let's think of L equal po be, being positive. Okay, so this is the picture. All right, so now we have the total that is um, with, um, um, uh, with periodic boundary condition. And um, uh, the next step is something which historically was sort of, you know, a big through in this field. I mean, of course, Toda is, is figured out already that it should be integrable. There were numerical simulations by Ford and others. And then in, in 1974, there was sort of a breakthrough. I mean, you know, by some combinatorial method sort of figured out what are the other conserved quantities. I mean, all the conservation laws and he actually proved for the first time that the Toda lattice is actually an integrable system in, you know, in, in the language of, of classical mechanics. But then Flaschka, who was at the, at the Courant Institute at the time, I mean, he realized that the good way to think about integrable system is to have a lax matrix. If there's a lax matrix, then you have lots of tools to work with, and then you can sort of, you know, hope to get in, in, a, in a, get more details. And uh, it was independently, you know, there was a, a, a sort of big, uh, dynamic systems group in, in, in Novosibirsk uh, in Siberia and, and uh, they, they somehow understood this also and, and, and then there's a paper by it's actually Manakov is the correct spelling and, and he also introduced uh, the Lex matrix uh, I and mean, this paper was a little bit less noted than this one but, but they sort of did it at the same time and independently. Anyway so the idea is in our case actually pretty simple I mean so first of all you introduce what you call the stretch I mean so that's uh, the distance between Two particles with with uh, with um, neighboring index. I mean the RJ at the moment. I mean just will take real values, right? I mean there's no ordering, so it can be either positive or negative. And then you take uh, the exponential of this, which are called HJ, and then uh, you you write down. Uh, so the interaction is sort of like the square of the A, and uh, I put here the HJ, and uh, then then you you figure out that in terms of the HJ. You can rewrite the equations of motion in this very simple form. Now, now it looks, uh, you know, you lose a little bit physical intuition, but it looks very algebraic because, you know, this is just a quadratic term and that's also a quadratic term. And now you can see, you know, how nice it is to think in terms of a lattice system. I mean, at every lattice side, I have my, my P and my A. And uh, they are, of course, interacting to the right and to the left. I mean, either to the P here or to the A. And so it's an just like, like any other sort of, you know, lattice systems, uh, you know, it has sort of a standard structure. So it's really a particular lattice field theory. And of course, uh, in terms of these variables, periodic boundary conditions just mean the obvious one. I mean, periodic boundary condition means, simply means that, that, that the P's and the A's sort of are continued uh, along the circle, okay? So now uh, we want to do hydrodynamics. And so crucial features of hydrodynamics, of course, are, are the conservation laws. And you see, when you when you do integrable systems classically you always think about objects which are invariant under the flow i mean you you know you you think of uh, observables which are commuting with the hamiltonian that's fine but for hydrodynamics it's, it's not enough you you want to have a sum variable and you know the sum should be over local functions and so let me just because this is a very important concept let me you know presumably all of you know but but let me emphasize this anyhow so here's one example of a local conservation law, which is just a stretch. I mean, you insert this into this equation. I mean, you discover that the total stretch is conserved. So this is sort of the usual notion of a conserved quantity. But you can see that it has a density and it's strictly local. It's just sitting at a single lattice side. And so when I take a sine derivative of the density, then of course it will not be zero, but it will be the difference of some other field. And in this case, it's just the momentum. And of course, you know, because of that difference, I mean, you know, when I do, uh, I have a telescope being sum and therefore the sum will be conserved. So it's very important to have a local conservation law. So here I have the field and the negative of the momentum is the associated current. And of course, if I do, you know, a sum over a spatial cell, and if then if I'm asking myself, how is the stretch changing, then it just will change to the boundary, just as we know what local conservation laws are. But now we have the, we have the Lex matrix and the Lex matrix allows us to get all the other conserved quantities. Okay, so let me see, let me show you how this works. So here's the Lex matrix. So, so this is uh, uh, what, you, what you realize that the equations of motion, you can write down this in the matrix form. And the way how you do it is you arrange the P's along the diagonal and the A's along the off diagonal. And then there's sort of something left out here from the periodic boundary conditions. And then there are sort of a companion matrix, I mean, sometimes it's called M. I mean, it doesn't have a specific name in the literature anyway. So, so yeah, I called it B. 
Um, and it's sort of like, like, like you know, the school trend version of, of this matrix. So I put the minus A up here and the A is down here. And, and this one is also and on the diagonal it's zero. So, so BN will be, will be a skewer joint, all right? And then you, 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 just, you, know, you just work it out and then you find that if you want to look at the time evolution of the Lex matrix, it's given through this simple commutator, okay? And then of course, you know, once you look at this, I mean, this in this audience, I don't have to explain that. It's clear that, you know, the, the B, uh, you know, uh, generates in, in an uh, isospectral transformation and therefore the L at time T will have exactly the same eigenvalues at the L at zero. And therefore all the eigenvalues are conserved. And so now we have to switch and now we have uh, N other eigenvalues. So I found altogether N conserved quantities. Okay, and then of course, you know, Technically, to prove that it's actually an integrable system, you have to do a little bit more. But you know, this is sort of the the the, the, the main work. But you should be immediately disappointed. And in fact, in fact, this is what 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 Heno was. I mean, he realized that there's a difficulty that if you if you uh, take this as your definition of of the conserved quantities, you know, they're certainly not local. I mean, you know, the lambda J will depend you know all over the place, and and uh, you know, it will just be not a local conservation law. But flash carb, people around him, they immediately realize that, that there's a trivial way to make it local. And the idea is that rather than looking at the eigenvalues, you look at, um, at the sum over the nth power of the eigenvalue. Or if you formulate it in terms of matrices, you look at the trace of the, of the little n power of the Lex matrix, okay? And this clearly is, a, you know, first of all, it has a density because I can sort of work out the trace. So I just have to take the JJ matrix element of this power. So uh, it has a density, but the density is also local. And then also this, you know, I, I should really explain because it's, it's always elementary, but, but I think it's good for the understanding because it's a very crucial property which, which ha has to be satisfied. You really need local conservation laws. And so why is this local? Well, I mean, let, let me take the example of n equal to six. Uh, so n equal to six, uh, uh, you know, I have to sort of, you know, work work out the, the six power of this matrix, and this conveniently I do in terms of a random walk expansion. I just multiply the matrices and look at the matrix elements, and uh, this is nearest neighbor. So I have paths which can either go straight or up or down, and then uh, you know the path has to start at j here. I put j equal zero and has to end up at zero, and then I take here one particular case. I mean, so you know, I go up, stay constant, up again. And go down. So this would be one particular case. And then you see that the, the, the A0 comes here, but it comes here again. So I have A0 squared, the P1 is here, comes again. So that's P1 squared, and then I have the A1 squared. And so you see that, that this particular object for n equal to six will be uh, uh, a sum over, over monomials of order six. So it will be some complicated uh, polynomial if you want to, so, but, but uh, you know, it's certainly local in the sense that you know, the, the lattice sites which are involved are here just sort of the, the late silver and one. Well, if I go down, then I get also the minus one. Anyway, it will be a local quantity. And therefore I get also, um, uh, I can write down the local conservation laws quite explicitly, namely, um, uh, I just take the time derivative. This will be something local. And you, since you have the formulas are so explicit, it sort of looks very much as before. The only point is that the LN has to sort of uh, decorate it with, uh, with uh, the, the lower triangle, triangle part of the LN. I mean, so, so this is sort of uh, the formula for the currents. Okay, so now we, have, uh, we are in the situation that we have a particular lattice field theory it has lots of conserved quantities, but all this, these conserved quantities are actually local. They are strictly local. Okay, now let's see where we go. Okay, so, so now, now we can do the long time limit. Uh, and of course, this was understood already by Boltzmann, but, but uh, uh, here we are sort of in a much more complicated version and th th there's, there's sort of more on the mathematical side, dynamical systems. I mean, there's Henrici and Coppola, I mean, who sort of investigated this uh, situation quite uh, sort of in great detail. And, and uh, what, what they found is that the way how to do it is you, you fix uh, the stretches, so you fix the logs of the A's and you fix the total momentum and then you will find uh, tori of dimension n minus one. And uh, since you have a little bit control over, over the action variables, I mean, you prove actually that the, the Hamiltonian and the new variable, you know, has no flat pieces. And therefore, you know, almost surely, I mean, all these uh, uh, frequencies on, on this uh, uh, n minus one tori are incommensurate. 
and therefore in the long time limit you will almost go, surely go to the to the to the uniform measure on on, on, on the torque okay so so the long time limit you know is, is a rather definite uh, has a rather definite prescription I mean that's fine but I don't know what to do with it you know the, the torque and of course you know they're abstractly defined but but they are sitting in in this phase space in the physical world just in such a complicated way that I have no idea how to to work with them and so we do what we do very often. We want to do statistical mechanics. So in principle, of course, what I would like to do, this is sort of the microcanonical measure. I mean, you know, I would like to somehow understand its structure, but this, this I really don't know. And it uh, look, looks like a difficult problem. I mean, you know, there are some attempts, but um, anyway. Uh, instead, I will, will just do, you know, use the standard equivalence of ensembles and, and will work sort of in a grand canonical picture. And there I can give you some positive answers. Okay. So now let, let, let's first see what, what kind of equivalence of ensembles we have to do. First of all, we, we had a fixed uh, uh, cell size. Okay, so this is one delta function which is sitting here, over here. This I replace by the exponential of this, which gives me then a product of the exponentials of the R-chase. Okay, and that's very nice because you remember that um, uh, our actual interaction potential was, was an exponential. I mean, so this is a decaying exponential. And now from this, you know, it's up in the exponent. Up from this, I get, if I put the P positive, I get another potential, which is linear and it's increasing. So you see, if I put negative P, then the system is completely unstable. But if you put positive P, then now I have an, uh, an onside potential of, you know, sort of, uh, well, it, it's not onside. I mean, it, it, it's for, for the increments. I have a potential which is increasing both at infinity, plus infinity and minus infinity. So this will be a thermodynamic stable situation. And so you find now the new a priori measure. I take here the a's, which is simply going from, from, from the q's to, to, to uh, these new variables. And then there's a weight which comes from this one, which is just aj to the power 2p. Okay. And that a priori measure is uh, certainly invariant under the total flow with periodic boundary condition. Okay. So now I have already my a priori measure, but uh, I have many, many more conserved quantities. So, so, so you know, I, I, you know of course, I could study the partition function, which is you know, defined by this, but that's maybe not so interesting. Okay, so now I have to do the Boltzmann weight. And uh, there, of course, uh, I go to Gibbs who told us how to do it. Namely, if you have three conserved quantities, then I should, you know, if in the grand canonical prescription, I should just take the linear combination. Now here I have infinitely many. So let's just take, uh, you know, sort of uh, a large number, or eventually infinite number of, uh, um, uh, of, of these traces and, and you know, their chemical potentials over here. And this is sort of, you know, complicated to read. And uh, once you realize that it's much nicer to write it as minus trace of some function V, which is defined through this power series, uh, but it's really the function which I should think, I mean, you know, the power series is just some way of, of writing it, but, but let's think about this function. And uh, uh, the, 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 the Boltzmann weight is simply the trace it's still in finite volume, it's a finite dimensional matrix trace over some function of the Lex matrix. And uh, this I call confining potential, which because, you know, if you want to have thermodynamic stability, you realize that this potential sort of like in other field series has to increase at infinity. I mean, how much, and, and uh, these are all technical issues, but, but it, it has to sort of qualitatively look like this one. So, so this is the confining potential. So the confining potential is the thermodynamics. It's nothing to do with the original exponential potential of the total lattice, okay? And so now we are done. I mean, I can write down the generalized Gibbs ensemble. Here's my a priori weight, and there's this exponential weight with some general, reasonably general confining function B, okay? It's a measure on, 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 on this product space. Um, and I have two parameters for my Gibbs measure. One of them is the scalar, which is the pressure, physically the pressure, and uh, it's a positive quantity, so it's a pressure. And then there's this confining object, which is a, which is a full function. Now, once you're at that stage, you know, it's, it's, it's very important to make sort of like, uh, sort of a slight switch of your, of your framework of how you're looking at these things. I mean, you know, you're, you're thinking of the P and Qs. This is not the way good, and maybe, maybe then, then there are some Qs, but you're thinking of the P and Qs, this is not a good way to think about it. Rather, what you should think of is sort of the central quantity, namely uh, the, the Lex matrix. It's the Lex matrix which will determine the, the thermodynamics, it's the Lex matrix which will determine 
the, 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 the long, the, the hydrodynamic evolution. So it's the Lex matrix. Now this Lex matrix is now a random matrix under this weight, okay? And the goal will be to understand actually, you know, what is, what is the properties of this random matrix? In particular, I would like to know something like about the density of states of that matrix. Now there's one particular case, which is, uh, which is very easy. Namely, uh, if I do the thermal equilibrium, then the confining potential it's just a usual Gaussian. I mean, it will be fairly confining potential. And then if you look at the Lex matrix, I realized that on the diagonal, uh, you know, I mean, and, and uh, if I put this one, then of course, you know, under, under uh, with this choice, I mean, the, the, the A's and the P's are independent and uh, the P's are IID Gaussians and the A's are this high distribution. And uh, so this is, uh, you know, some power, times, uh, times uh, the Gaussian. And um, um, so in the thermal case, I mean, this last matrix is particularly simple because it's a triangle matrix where the matrix elements, uh, the uh, IID random variables, but they have sort of a different distribution whether I look at the diagonal or at the off the, off the angle. So now you would think that, you know, for this particular case, I mean, you should be able to figure out what is uh, what? What is the density of state? But but uh, this is this is not easy, and nobody has sort of figured this out before. So I will tell you what the answer is. But but uh, you know, even even in the independent case, it's not a simple thing. But then we have to look at this something more complicated. So so there's something something so some difficulties which are ahead. Anyway, so let's first look at what we would like to actually. Uh, uh, Herbert, uh, a question. So. Um, so how do we determine this function v? So it's it's it's, it's given it, it's given by initial yeah. condition or something. Well, right? okay. Later on, I will tell you that. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. It's given by the initial condition, but you know, mm -hmm. if I sort of thermodynamics, it's sort of like like giving beta, right? I mean, you know, it's it's, it's giving you something like the inverse temperature, right? Yes. So here, the, the Gibbs measure now has a full function. Yeah. Right? Yes. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, it's not something that we can choose. Yeah, it, it, well, it, at the moment you, you can, you know, I want to study the Gibbs measure for general choice of V. It's mm -hmm. a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a free parameter in my problem if you want. So. Okay. All right, so, so, so now I, I sort of summarize what we would like to know. I mean, what I said already, so, so I can make this sort of rather brief actually. So first of all, you know, there's sort of the, the more probabilistic question, you know, what about limit measures, exponential mixing, presumably they are exponential mixing. I mean, I did some work which uses transfer matrix. Uh, when you do transfer matrix in sense of statistical mechanics, then you need a finite polynomial. I mean, then you really have a finite range. Uh, so then you don't capture really the full generality. So one would like to get rid of, of having, you know, a finite polynomial for your confining potential. But there's work going on and then presumably uh, another six months, maybe maybe we'll understand this sort of much better. Anyway, so so this so one thing, but but we really want to know, you know, if, if you want to do um, uh, hydrodynamics and we want to know the free energy, that's maybe only an intermediate step. But as I told you, what I really would like to know is the density of state. So here is again the formula. Uh, I, I take one over n, and I just sort of put uh, you know delta at every. Uh, value of, of my uh, every eigenvalue of my Lex matrix. And then you want to, uh, first of all, I mean, you know, you want to prove, which in fact, now we have even paper where this is proved that you have an almost sure limit, which is then sort of a smooth function, rho q of w, but, but you know, in order to actually do the hydrodynamics, you would like to know what, how do I even determine this limiting function, right? Now, once I determine this limiting function, then, uh, uh, you know, what it buys you is that uh, now you can compute all the average values of the fields. I mean, the one is just because, you know, I, I put let aside one. I mean, so this is the energy, there, this is the conserved field at let aside one. And, and you know, uh, the, uh, my conserved fields are just these averages uh, as a function of little n, right? But, but then when you look at the definition, it's just the nth moment of the density of state. And, and uh, conceptually, it, it, rather than thinking about these moments, it's, it's, it's much more informative to think about uh, the, the, the function which, which sort of gives this moment. So it's much con more convenient to think of this probability distribution, the rho q of w, which is the density of states, okay? Now, um, there's a side branch here, which, which of course I don't have any time to go into, you know, I, I should also say something about 
Um, but the carbon synthetic look for a long time some is some real difficult problem, but uh, uh, fortunately, you know, I, I had some time to think about it and and uh, and uh, when I was at Tokyo Tech, I'm visiting, I guess, beginning this year, uh, I discovered that, that, that in fact, that there's a very simple, uh, the, the, the carbons are, you know, can be determined and they're actually related to the dissociated central limit theorem. So you see, this is the law of large numbers. And now you can ask yourself, on that large scale, how do the eigenvalues fluctuate relative to this law of large numbers? And if you understand these fluctuations, then uh, you can actually also compute what are the average carbons. But, but this, this I don't have any time to explain. Okay, so, so we, we still continue here with, with the equilibrium statistical mechanics, okay? So, so now, now let, let's see what we can do. I mean, so, um, so we want to somehow compute the free energy. So, you know, I write down the partition function uh, and uh, I mean, you just don't know what to do. And then uh, you realize that there's a very beautiful paper by Dumitrio and Edelman uh, some time back who actually studied sort of a converse question. I mean, they studied from, from, from the so-called beta ensembles of Gaussian van der matrices or just, just just a unitary ensemble, which is uh, uh, which is beta equal to two, um, and they, you know, they sort of came off from 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 uh, sort of the more numerical side. I mean, they wondered whether you could isospectrally transform uh, this matrix into a triangle angle matrix, and in fact, they 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 uh, they, uh, they managed to do that. And here's the triangle angle matrix, and the result is that. Um, um, uh, this right angle matrix, I mean, so here you should, uh, I mean, here should, you should maybe put the quadratic one, I mean, here I'm looking at the quadratic case, so think of, uh, I should do okay. Think of weak quadratic for this explanation. What they found, they always looked at the quadratic case, so it's trace Tn squared, Tn is this matrix. And what they found is how to somehow transform uh, this volume element. And, and uh, the step was to go from this formula which is sort of basically the definition of the partition function to a formula which is only involves the distribution of eigenvalues, right? And so, so the amazing thing is that, that, uh, that this particular matrix, I've written here the, the partition function, but, but this is sort of what they were aiming for, actually has exactly the, the, the distribution of, of, of the log gas, or if you want, so the, the distribution of a, of a, of a Gaussian uh, van der matrix, if I put B, beta equal to two, once they did this, then uh, they realize that the algebra works for any beta. And so this is an identity true for any positive beta. Okay, hooray. I mean, so it looks good. It looks rather close to what we want to do, but now you see there's one sort of uh, difficult thing. I mean, you know, in order to transform the original volume, el the volume elements and uh, to have this as an identity, they have to put the pressure not constant. That was the one which I actually used because that sort of comes from the total lattice. But this has to be linear in the index J with this positive constant beta. Okay, and so we are not done because you know this is um, not exactly what we need. I mean, we, we want to have uh, they have a linear pressure through the system uh, with a slope which is beta, and the t we really want to have the constant pressure. So this looks first like a problem, but then you realize that everything sort of comes out very nicely. Namely, the correct choice for the beta is to take beta uh, like one over n uh, and uh, with, uh, with uh, the pressure in front, okay? So, so this is now the choice of beta. And um, uh, the reason why I want to do it uh, like this, well, so, so, uh, so, so this sort of uh, gives you two results at once. I mean, the first observation is because it's like one over n, then uh, because, you know, the pressure is varying so slowly I can sort of get my free energy by simply adding up the free energy of the of every little piece, and uh, if there's sufficient decay, I mean, then this this addition is sort of uh, work is correct, and therefore, when I look at the the, uh, the uh, free energy of the Dumitru Edelman uh, partition function, it will be simply the integral over the Toda. Uh, free energy when I change the pressure linearly. Okay, so you have this identity. And now, of course, I can somehow invert this and get the total free energy. Okay, so this is number one. And that uh, from their formula, I will get a formula for the total free energy. But there's a, another important um, uh, observation because I put here this parameter like one over n, suddenly I have a mean field problem. And so 
I know what, 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 what the large n behavior of that quantity is. It's just a standard mean field type of computation. Okay. So this is what I've written down in the next slide here. Uh, 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 so, so, you know, I mean, you, you, I just, just, just copy from, 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 from what I have over here. And now, now this is one over n, so this gives me sort of my, so what you are used to uh, from, from when the matrix theory is that, uh, you know, this is of order one and therefore the entropy is completely suppressed. <coughs> but here, I, if I put this one over n, then, you know, the interaction, uh, all, all terms of, of, of order n. I mean, this one, the confining potential, uh, this interaction term and also the entropy term. And therefore in my mean field theory, I will get all three terms, okay? So here's what the result is. Uh, so you get um, uh, this mean field free energy. So this is the confining potential, which is linear. Here's uh, the log term. And, and I remind you that the log was the two particle phase shift. So you see, it's, a, it's an amazing identity. If you, if, you now would, if you now would say, okay, let's do something similar for the, for the Palocios Moser model, where the interaction is one over sin squared. Then the conjecture would be, I still will have this identity. The only thing I have to introduce now, the correct two particle phase shift of uh, this uh, one over sin squared model. model. Of course, nobody, I, I don't know, I have no idea how to prove that, um, but for the Toda, I mean, one has a proof and, and, and you know, it's believed to be true in all this channel and all models, there's some sort of variational problem. And this variational problem in, involves also having, you know, the two particle phase shift as computed to the dynamics. If you look at the deep linear delta Bose gas, this function will be a Lorentzian and it's a Lorentzian which comes up through the quantum mechanical two particle scattering shift. So somehow, you know, the thermodynamics and the dynamics are sort of linked in, in this somewhat funny way. Anyway, so, so, so now, now we can go ahead. I mean, we, we, uh, the, 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 this is sort of a well-studied problem. It has a unique minimizer, which I call a, a rho star. And if I evaluate this mean field functional at the minimizer, and then, you know, I have to take account the, the, the ramping, and this gives me sort of this extra, uh, pressure derivative, uh, then uh, this formula gives me actually the total free energy as a function of P and V. Of course, modulo solving this mean field problem, which generically you have to do uh, sort of, uh, you know, numerically, but, uh, but anyway, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a tremendous simplification over the full microscopic description. And, you know, not so surprising. I mean, you can also figure out what is, what is uh, uh, the lex density, uh, the lex matrix density of state. I, again, there's this funny factor of, uh, of uh, P derivative, uh, which comes from the ramping. But the assertion is that, uh, you know, when I know the minimizer, essentially I also know the lex density of states. So in, in, in the thermal case, I mean, uh, this formula sort of simplify a little bit. And then uh, you can, in fact, uh, there, there's an exact solution which was obtained uh, quite some time ago by somebody called Opa. Uh, but, but it's, it's, I mean, exact solution sort of still involves integral, which, which are slightly complicated. And, and so uh, let me just show you one, one simple thing. I mean, of course, you can do also numerics. I mean, it's, it's, it, this is not so hard. But anyway, I mean, so um, what you find is that, that, that if P goes to zero, so zero pressure particles are very far apart. And then you basically just see see the one along the diagonal and that's of course the Gaussian. So, so here uh, you, you will find the Gaussian for this, for this uh, Lex US. But when you, when you go to, to, uh, to, uh, to higher pressure, uh, it can, becomes a little bit difficult. I mean, you know, there's some intermediate regime for which you don't have such explicit formulas. But then when you go to very large pressure, it should cross over because large pressure basically means that we are now sort of already looking at, 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 the, at, the, at the random matrix ensembles and therefore it should go over to the, to the Wigner semicircle law. But then I have to do this, this, uh, this derivative. And uh, so what I will find is actually the derivative of the Wigner safety circle law. And that's actually, uh, uh, one can even prove this. I mean, there, there's some recursion relation which you use for the moments in this case. And so, so this is what you find for the density of states um, in the thermal case. And so, you know, it's something which sort of um, uh, at the edge, I mean, it, it, it sort of goes up like a one over square root. Okay. All right, so now, now, uh, now I have uh, uh, shown you a little bit uh, about the thermodynamics. Um, 
um, uh, and uh, and this uh, free energy functional. But uh, I mean, so far we have, have just done uh, the, the, the the thermodynamics, right? I mean, so 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 now I have to sort of uh, quickly come back to to you know what what I originally promised to you, namely uh, we want to do actually do the do the hydrodynamics. Okay, so let, let, let's have a look a little bit at the hydrodynamics now. Um, okay, so now, now here comes sort of the hydrodynamic equations. Okay, so uh, I, I should emphasize, uh, I mean, since it's sort of a uh, little bit mathematical physics, I should emphasize that, uh, that uh, nobody knows how to, to actually prove uh, these kind of equations, right? I mean, you know, to actually really show what, what, what I'm going to explain you in a, in a second, I mean, this is something which, which uh, uh, I mean, nobody has really attempted, but it, it, you know, it, it doesn't look such an easy enterprise. I mean, there's one, you know, long time back. I mean, a very beautiful work by by De Bruijn and and uh, uh, I guess Voltigini, Pellegrinotti. I mean, uh, they studied a classical system of hard bots, which is, is much much simpler than than the total lattice, and then, and they actually proved that that you know you have sort of the analog of the hydrodynamic equation for that system. So this is a system of hard watts. I mean, just classical hard watts with certain watt lengths and they move and then they have elastic collisions. And then, and, and for this, uh, I mean, the Russian was very fond of this program and he, he sort of um, worked this out in, 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 in complete detail, you know, from our perspective now. And uh, he also the later works where he computed now with Stokes correction, all kinds of things. Anyway, so, so this, is, uh, this is not, uh, at the moment we cannot go so far, but what we can do, we can sort of, with great confidence, we can sort of uh, state what are the correct hydrodynamic equations. Okay, so this is uh, what, 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 what I want to explain to you. And so, so here I'm now going back to my, my space time picture. And I imagine that I put some initial conditions uh, at, at time t equals zero. And, and this is now the question what, what Hal was asking. Uh, I assume that, that uh, at, at the initial time, I have a slowly varying you know, what people call a generalized Gibbs ensemble. So this means that I'm putting here a Gibbs ensemble where uh, the confining potential and the stretch are slowly varying on the scale of the lattice. And so when I go to the continuum, then, uh, you know, it will, so, so this is sort of the macroscopic positions and then, you know, the, the confining potential and the stretch will depend on X, right? I mean, this defines for me what I mean by the initial state. And then I let the system run. I mean, you know, it's 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 ballistic, so X and T are sort of of the same order. And then at some later time, I can sort of uh, look at at some space time patch, which I label here by X and T. So that's this red dot. And underlying, I have sort of the the, the, the microscopic particle system. Okay. And now 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 the idea of 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 hydrodynamics is to say, uh, you know, once once I take this sort of somewhat special initial conditions. And then when I'm going to look later, then what, what, what I will see at this later time is, is uh, uh, some other uh, uh, GGE, some other generalized Gibbs ensemble, but with updated parameters. So since uh, this uh, equilibrium, uh, sorry, since this uh, generalized Gibbs ensemble depends on the stretch and on the, on the lex DOS, then uh, it, it will be those, those uh, quantities which uh, sort of characterize the local state, and it will be those which evolve according to the hydrodynamic equation. And here I, I sort of want to come back to, to, um, to, 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 to the Lex matrix. You see, um, when, when, when I look at the particle system, like what we had in the beginning, I just do a numerical simulation. I mean, then sort of it looks very noisy or maybe not so noisy, but you know, it's not, not very clear to, 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 to somehow how to, of course, you see all this, this trajectories, but, but it's not so clear how to analyze uh, the system. But, but now, it, once you understand this, I mean, it's, it's very clear what to do. I mean, you take a little piece of your system. Let's say you, you take, I don't know, 100, um, uh, 100 uh, uh, particles in, a, in, a, in some region. And then what you should do is out of these 100 particles, you should look at the eigenvalues of the corresponding Lex matrix. So you first take the Qs and the Ps, you form the Lex matrix. And from this, you solve, you look at the eigenvalues. And it's these eigenvalues which are changing slowly in time. Everything else is sort of bobbling back and forth and, and you know, has, has sort of another very sort of a no simple deterministic uh, 
uh, well, has a microscopic dynamics, but sort of on that larger scale, sort of it doesn't have sort of clear features. But but uh, but the lex matrix is the one which is sort of slowly varying, and and therefore you can sort of follow this in time, and of course also the stretch because that's another conserved quantity. Well, and so now you do what 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 you should do. I mean, you now think of of. Uh, uh, the, the, the stretch is space-time dependent. I mean, you think of your Lex matrix, so that's the Lex DOS, also space-time dependent. This is now a function, so, so this is a, a probability density, actually it's normalized to one, and uh, it, it varies from space-time point, and now you can write down uh, the, the hydrodynamic equation to what, what I told you. I mean, if you look at the first conservation law, uh, this was just the first moment of, uh, of, of uh, the Lex matrix, so you will get, get this sort of like, like mass conservation um, as, as one equation. And then there will be a second equation, which, um, which uh, gives you how the Lex matrix is evolving in time uh, with some uh, complicated expression for the current. Right? Now, I have no time and you know, I, I cannot go into the way how you actually get this current, nor can I give you any, any sort of you know, plausible steps, how you get there. I mean, this, this would require sort of uh, another talk, which would be more technical and, 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 and presumably not, not so illuminating. However, what, what, what I like, what I would like to show is that, um, you know, this quantity which I've written here uh, is actually a function of, of new and pro q. I mean, just to give you sort of an, an, a rough idea of, of the complexity of the equation, right? I mean, it, it must be, you know, it must be a closed equation, so it must be some function, but, you know, what, what kind of function is it? And so, so, you know, this comes a little bit out of the blue, but, but my experience is that if I leave this completely off, I mean, then, uh, and of course, you can look, look at, at, at what I've written here, but, but um, you know, then, then uh, the, the, I mean, what exactly is the effective? Anyway, so, so, so let me show you briefly what it is, okay? So, so, so first of all, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the, new, the, the Q1, I mean, this was already uh, just the first moment and the new is just a stretch. So these are the basic quantities, right? And, but now I have to explain you, so the Q1, I, I know already, and the Q is sort of, you know, part of the evolution equation. So, so, so the, the, this, this term is easy, so to speak. But now the question is, what is this term, okay? So, so I will try to explain you exactly what this term is. So it's a function of the, of, of, of the local characteristics, but what kind of function is it? Well, it's not too complicated, but it is a little bit involved. I mean, so, so let me do this um, one by one. I mean, so first of all, um, out of the scattering shift, uh, you make an integral operator. I mean, so, so this is this, uh, what I call T here, which has an integral operator, which has this logarithmic term in here, right? And, and the logarithm is really the, the, the two particle scattering shift. If I would look at another model, then here I would have to take some other function. Okay, so for the TODA, it's, it's the logarithm and, uh, and this defines for me a linear operator. And then I define a new function, which I call rho sub u, which is the old rho q, and then uh, this t acting on, on rho q, and then uh, so that, that's some other function and here, so, so, you know, it's just a definition. I mean, there's nothing, at the moment, nothing deeper behind. But but now the assertion is that once I know the rho mu, then uh, I can tell you what what this whole product is. So one over mu, which is this one, the V effective, the rho q, this whole thing, you know, as a function of mu and rho q. And the assertion is that, uh, you know, it's not too bad. I mean, what I have to do is I have to, to, to take this operator and I have to multiply it with rho mu where rho mu is now considered as a multiplication of operator. So rho mu is also a function of w, and it's just a multiplication operator, right? And then I act with this integral operator, and then I have to work this matrix and multiply it again with rho mu. I mean, so, so I mean, together this, this one, that's actually a, a symmetric operator. And I have to act on a linear function. So, so the, the, this is a concrete function. I mean, the, the theta is here, theta of w is just a linear function, okay? So acting with this on a linear function, I get a new function, right? And it's this function which I have to plug in over here. Okay, so it's a little bit, uh, you know, it, it looks like like uh, voodoo uh, because uh, you know I cannot give you the the background, but uh, but uh, but this is the function which you have to use. Now it turns out that. Um, uh, actually, uh, you know, once, once you're on this high dynamic level, then, then there are, uh, you know, lots of things to be done. I mean, this actually, you know, doesn't turn out to be sort of the most convenient, 
way of doing it. Uh, rather, what you would like to do, you would like to, to write down the equation for the rho mu. This is sort of like introducing normal coordinates. I mean, so, you know, it, it, it changes this equation, which is typically hard to do numerically, to something which people call quasi linear, where the nonlinearity is sort of, you know, moved out of the derivative. And so what people do when they when they do numerical solution, they actually solve directly this equation. I mean, so you you know you start with a given row mu, uh, and you imagine this to be fixed, and then then you, you solve sort of this for one time step. That's just a linear equation which you can do. Then uh, you know, uh, then we have a, no, a new row of t. And then with the, the new row mu of t and the new new, you uh, you compute uh, you know what would be the the the, the new uh, velocity so to speak, and then you just sort of keep going. So, so this is what is done for the numerics. Okay, so let me see. I think I'm, I'm basically uh, finished here. Yeah, so, so let me just sort of uh, give you some, some outlook. I mean, so uh, I don't know. I, I hope I, I give, give you at least sort of some, some sort of vague impression of uh, what the whole story is about. I mean, as I said, I mean, the total lattice is just one example um, and uh, one which sort of best understood, but uh, there's a lot of work on, on other, mostly quantum many body systems and, um, uh, okay, I mean, if somebody really wants to read about it, I mean, I, I, I do recommend very highly, I mean, there are lecture notes by Benjamin Doyon, I mean, he uh, discusses also a little bit Toda, but I mean, he, his main focus is sort of more on, on uh, quantum mechanical models, and, and uh, but it's sort of a nice introduction, I mean, so, so I think that this is sort of, a, sort of, uh, a nice way to to uh, sort of you know get a little bit more information about the whole field. Um, I posted some some notes uh, where you know if you want to read about you know all the kind of things which I try to compress into a short hour. If you want to sort of look them up a little bit more in more detail, uh, don't go to the original papers. I mean because you know they were written sort of apart and and and, and sort of slightly unsystematic. But but I think in in in, in this uh, posted article uh, I try to develop in sort of in a, in a somewhat more systematic way and what I do also I try to sort of um, explain a little bit more uh, you know what is the general structure behind this model so when, when you look in, in these notes you will also find a somewhat lengthy chapter about, uh, about um, the Lieb linear model and, and also but, but uh, actually a quite interesting area uh, you know, you can ask, what about the quantum total? I mean, the, the quantized version, this will be discussed over here, okay? And uh, then uh, let me repeat what I said many times. I mean, the, the Euler type equations always have the same structure. It's, uh, and it's a two-particle two scattering shift, which is sort of the, 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 which sort of in some sense characterizes the model. And of course, you know, uh, at some point you will see quantum, you know, you will see, quantum statistical mechanics, so there will be, of course, slight differences between whether I look at the classical model, whether I look at the quantum model. And uh, I mentioned the Navier-Stokes correction. Uh, so if that sort of, uh, you know, here we did, uh, um, I mean, first order, so, so these are hyperbolic conservation laws. The Navier-Stokes correction is then second order in, in the spatial derivatives. And if you want to understand what people have done about this, uh, you will find uh, some very good explanation in this particular paper. So, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Herbert. Uh, let's thank everybody here. Uh, you can unmute yourselves and uh, clap a little bit. So now we have some chance for, for questions. Uh, maybe I ask, ask you uh, one question about uh, is there anything you can sort of from this uh, this structure? Does any of that any of that remain for the near integrable case? So if you, <laughs> if you think about uh, Fermi Pasta Ulam, for instance, which has a very slow thermalization, so could it be that some of some of this? No, yeah, no, no. I mean, that, there and, uh, that's that's certainly a very good question. I mean, of course, there is. Um, um, I mean, there's yeah. I mean, people. People uh, are trying to do that. I mean, there, 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 there's a, there's a lot of uh, lot of uh, work actually, uh, sort of more on the physics side. I mean, what 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 people have been trying to do is actually, um, you see, uh, take uh, if if it's close to integrability, then you know basically follow the schemes 
of kinetic theory. I mean, so if you think about kinetic theory, I mean, you know, just whatever hard spheres or so, then, uh, uh, you know, the lowest order is just sort of free particle moving. And then you include, you know, the deviation from integrability. So then the free particles are the integrable system and you try to include the deviations from integrability by a collision term uh, a la Boltzmann. That includes, you know, the non integrable case. I mean, the hard sphere collisions. And this is this is something which people have been trying to do also on, on, on the level of this uh, uh, integrable uh, many body systems. I mean, so so you would say that the, the lowest order is, is 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 the integrable system, and then you try to include, um, you know, by sort of a Boltzmann type collision term, uh, um, uh, the the, the non integrable part. But you see that I mean the, this program and the, 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 you know there. Are, references i mean people have actually there have been conferences on this i mean people have really worked on this of course it's a much more difficult enterprise because the integrable system you know to which you add the the, the non-integral part is 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 considerably more complicated than just three particles right so in that sense it requires work but people have tried to do that yeah but um uh yeah i mean it's uh yeah i, I don't have any good feeling i mean you know how, how important uh these corrections actually are. I mean, uh, when people do comparison with experiments, typically, you know, they are very happy just to explore the structure which which uh, which is behind this uh, this um, uh, Euler equations for the integrable system. That's typically already difficult enough. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question? So, so suppose you start from a slowly varying Gibbs state rather than GGE and do the hydrodynamic time evolution. D do you see the indication of integrability and does it evolve into like GGE or? Yeah, I mean, uh, when, you, when you start, so you want to start with, with, with thermal equilibrium, right? I mean, so yeah, thermal uh, or slowly varying thermal equilibrium. Uh, I that, that uh, now I, I start with the GGE, which is sort of a slowly varying parameter in front of the of, of the quadratic term, right? Right, right. And then, right. Uh, then uh, what what you see, I mean, this is very well confirmed. I mean, what you see is that 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 uh, uh, yeah, of course you know this field couples to all the other fields. Hmm. Therefore, you know, when you when you solve your hydrodynamic equation at some later time, then uh, you you will you will typically find. Um, uh, sort of, you know, no longer uh, confining potentials which are quadratic. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, now the, 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 the other side of the question is, um, you know, for instance, what people have investigated is uh, let's let's simply truncate, you know, this this hydrodynamic equations at, at the you know three most basic conserved quantities which we know. I mean, sort of, you know, density uh, or stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, momentum and energy. You know how good is this approximation to the to the full uh, 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 coupled uh, fully? Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Probably that's what I'm asking. Yeah, mm. yeah. There are people. People um, actually. Okay. So 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 um, the, 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 there's one study which which people have done, um, which uh, sort of elucidates this thing. I mean, so so this is actually related to an experiment. I mean, you you take. Uh, you take uh, the um, uh, sort of, you know, you, you have uh, a confining tube and then you take many rubidium, 4,000 rubidium atoms. So this is like a little bit bigger with, with, with 4,000 particles. And then, uh, we, you know, you, you start with sort of with two bumps and then you, you simply look at the density. That's what you observe. And then you try to compare this with, with hydrodynamics. And um, uh, they did two things. One was, Comparing with, with the full hydrodynamics and our know, same type of equations which I have described to you, and the other one they said, well, let, 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 let's be bold and, and let's simply uh, take the hydrodynamics which is based on the on the, on the three basic, you know, I mean, just uh, uh, I mean, mass, uh, momentum, and energy uh, conserved fields. And uh, for short times, I mean, it, it works well. I mean, you wouldn't see much of a difference. But then, when you look at later times, of course, it depends a little bit on on how much variation you put in the initial condition. But they put mm -hmm. sort of like two bumps, and then what the two hydrodynamic equations will do actually, when you have two bumps, it will uh, develop um, what people call uh, shocks. I mean, there will be discontinuities in the density profile, mm -hmm. and that's something which you don't see for the full system. 
So after, you know, if you wait a little bit, I mean, then, then the two profiles simply will look qualitatively already different. Now, of course, you know, this depends a little bit on, on, on the initial condition. I can produce for you, presumably the initial conditions where, where both schemes sort of work reasonably well. But, but in this particular case, which has been studied, you, you can see pictures in, 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 you know, when you go to, 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 to the articles, uh, they make this comparison, and, and the, 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 the claim in the article is that uh, when you uh, do this generalized hydrodynamics and when you compare it with conventional hydrodynamics, it will not fit mm -hmm. uh, the experimental data in the case of two bumps. If you just take one bump, it will be perfectly okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that, that's a, it, it's a good point. I mean, you. You know, I mean, do we really need to to look at this sort of complicated list of conservation laws? And uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Hmm. Other questions? Uh, <laughs> I do have one more question. So, so this is about total free energy. So, uh, in what sense it's it's called free energy? So. Equilibrium free energy has many roles. Uh, mean, it's related to the second law, maximum work you can differentiate to get something, but or it satisfies variational principle. But in this case, uh, in in what sense this total free energy is a free energy? Well, I mean it's it's a free energy in the sense that it's it's a logarithm of the partition. Function. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. No, I'm I'm sure that you were not yeah. asking that. I mean then that, that's clear. No, well, in what sense is the free energy? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, it, yeah. I, I think it's 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 a free energy in, in, in the usual ways. I mean, you know, I, I've, I've showed you that there is a, there's a very yeah, yeah. principle. Yeah. Of course, now it's yeah. a very principle which sort of involves, you know, more parameters mm -hmm. than the usual one. Uh, uh, it, 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 when I when I take uh, derivatives of this free energy with respect to uh, you know, if I vary, you know, relative to uh, to what I call the confining potential, then you will get mm -hmm. average values of the conservation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so I think, I mean, to me, you know, I mean, uh, for fluids, you have, uh, I mean, let's say, you know, a real simple fluid in three dimensions. I mean, you have five parameters. So here you have uh, very many, but 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 I think yeah. uh, otherwise it, it 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 yeah no I think it. it yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's a free energy, just just like like what you're used for more conventional systems. I mean, the the, the main point is that that um, um, uh, you know, if, if you if you imagine that that you know the total fluid is sort of sitting in in some heat bath or so, then of course you don't need mm -hmm. all this thing. But once I look at the isolated system, I mean, then uh, the assertion is that. Um, uh, if I want to look at the time evolution, you better take all this uh, conservation laws into account, right? I mean, so yes, yes, yes. I, I, have, a, I have a question, if I could, Herbert. Yes. So, great talk, very interesting. Stephen Watson, uh, Scotland here, uh, from Glasgow. Uh, thermodynamic consistency is something that, which I find rather intriguing to try and sort of uh, see in the work here. So, if you have this notion that you have you know, conservation conservation laws, including of energy, where does thermodynamic consistency come in? Because in a continuum sense, you would formulate the existence of an entropy gives you compatibility relations, that would be Maxwell's relations between these continuum uh, upscaled quantities. How do you see the, those compatibility conditions arising here? Um, well, uh, well, I think, I think uh, uh, there's no okay. I mean, I haven't thought about it very carefully. I must say. So, so often, I would think that uh, uh, you know, whatever whatever identities you get in conventional thermodynamics, I mean, you know, you will get the same ones. Uh, just taking into account, I mean, that that. Okay. that uh, yeah, I would I would describe it this way. You 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 would basically posit you know conservation of mass, momentum, and energy as equalities. Propose constitutive laws that you can impose. But yeah. then have an additional statement that the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy must increase. So that's an inequality must yeah. be satisfied. I mean, and it's that condition. I had, I had no time to discuss it, but you know, there, there, there's an entropy production which which uh, which is uh -huh. different. Uh, so so in this, this goes into you know having having actually corrections now. But um, since since you are still listening, mm -hmm. actually I wanted to 
I should have done this during the talk, you see that there's one interesting question, namely, uh, you know, the issues with whether we have found all conservation laws. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's, I mean, uh, uh, Tal knows this. I mean, uh, you know, there's this beautiful work uh, when you look at quantum ladder systems and you try to figure out whether, you know, we have actually found all conservation laws, all local conservation laws or not, right? And, and, uh, mm -hmm. and this, I think, is actually an interesting question. I, for, for, for models like, like the XXY model uh, or, or non-integrable models, I mean, uh, you know, there, there's a work uh, uh, and, and, and people can actually prove, uh, you know, that, that in some cases uh, you only get sort of the, the, the trivial, I mean, maybe only the energy as conservation law or, or then if you go to the integrable case, I mean, you get sort of the, you know, the, 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 all the, all the uh, in, integrable, uh, I mean, all the conserved fields which people have found already, or maybe not. I mean, so anyway, I mean, it's, it's a more longer sto story, but, but um, uh, I have not been able to prove that. I mean, so for instance, one thing which I tried to do was uh, to, to check for the total lattice that uh, the, 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 the fields which I found are actually all. Mm -hmm. And this sort of looks 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 like a complicated question. I mean, presumably it's true, but but uh, I don't know how to do it. I mean, so yeah. So so since you mentioned you know conservation laws, I I wanted to say this. I mean, there seems to be like a dichotomy. I mean, you know, either you have the non integrable case has uh, has only one one or maybe two conservation laws, and then you have uh, the integrable which have infinitely many. I mean, that doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be anything in between. Very interesting. Thanks, Herbert. Any other questions? All right, so let's, uh, let's thank uh, Herbert again. Thanks thank a lot for a great talk and, and um,